in this module we'll look about we'll look through the various uh, gateways uh, provided by the OCI virtual cloud network service but before we get into any of the gateways discussion uh, we need to understand the concept of route tables uh, you saw this earlier in the demo when we were talking and introducing uh, virtual cloud network uh, we did create uh, use uh, a route table in in the vcn service when we were using the console but let's talk about what a route table is a route table contains rules about how ip packets can travel to different ip addresses out of the vcn so right here you can see there is there is a route table which is attached to the subnet now what does the route table consist of it consists of a set of route rules each rule specifies destination cider block and it specifies the route target the next hop for the traffic that matches uh, that cider so what exactly do we mean so if you look at this particular subnet it's a public subnet it can be regional or it can be ad specific in this case i'm just using a regional uh, public subnet uh, and in the route table there is an entry which says 0.0.0.0 slash .0, 0 which means any IP address or all IP addresses uh, so this is my destination cider uh, packets destined for uh, for any IP address they need to go to internet gateway and this is what is being being shown here all traffic destined for internet gateway so what I do is I create an internet gateway it's a managed service provided by the OCI um, virtual cloud network service and right here you can see because of this that particular entry in my route table my packets can actually go to the to the internet and they can also come from the internet so somebody could uh, actually access if it's a web server they could access my uh, web server running in the in the public subnet now important considerations uh, to keep in mind each subnet uses a single route table uh, so it can only be every sub each subnet can only have a single route table uh, you can specify that when you are creating the subnet or you can edit it later if you are not sure you know what kind of route table to use you could edit that uh, later route table is used only if the destination ip address is not within the vcn's cider block so what that means is uh, you don't require any route rules uh, in order to enable traffic within the VCN itself so as you can see here in this uh, particular graphic there is no rule like a local rule required here uh, for routing uh, traffic within the VCN itself it's actually done uh, implicitly you do really don't write, need to write a rule like that when you add a gateway whether it's an internet gateway NAT gateway different kinds of gateways you have to update uh, the route table uh, for the subnets that uses these gateways otherwise you can create a gateway uh, but the packets will black hole they have no way uh, to go to the gateway then it's again it seems pretty logical but that's how uh, the route table works so having talked about uh, you looked at uh, route tables uh, briefly let's the, let's talk about the different gateways which are supported in the OCI uh, uh, VCN service the first gateway is 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 called internet gateway and as the name specifies uh, it's it's a gateway which is which takes traffic in and out uh, from a public subnet so as you can see here uh, as we had seen in the previous slides we have a public subnet here can be regional or ad specific uh, and there's an instance which which has a public ip now it can be a web server um, or a load balancer or something you are running your own load balancer those use cases but it has a public ip and of course uh, if it's a web server uh, we want users to access it or if it's a load balancer we want users to access it so we create this thing called internet gateway it's a managed service so you really don't need to care about the bandwidth uh, or you know ha all those are taken care by uh, by oracle you you create this internet gateway uh, and then uh, using that gateway the packets can go in and out uh, to this to this uh, pu public uh, to this instance in the public subnet now important things to keep in mind you can only have one internet gateway for a vcn so it means that if you have different public subnets let's say you have a public subnet where you are hosting your bastion servers and you have one for web servers one for something else uh, all of that traffic 
goes through and all of them subnets are part of your single vcn uh, all of them go through uh, the, the the one internet gateway which is available for the vcn uh, as we saw in the previous slide if you after creating an internet gateway you need to add a rule in the in the vcn's route table which says that packets to 0.0.0.0 slash .0, .0, 0 meaning all ip addresses every ip uh, address need to go to the internet gateway uh, and if you if you do you create an internet gateway add a rule you have a web server then you can start communicating uh, to that web server so that's the first use case where you have uh, uh, let's say a web server or a um, or a load balancer and you need to access uh, it um, uh, through the internet now there is another use case where you, if you have an instance in a private subnet that does not allow traffic from the internet to reach it then there is no way for ip packets to reach the internet we need a mechanism for sending those packets out so for example you have a database and you need to get some patches uh, and then also route the replies correctly uh, this is you know in, in networking lingo it's called network address translation in oci we do th this through a managed service uh, called nat gateway uh, a nat gateway accepts any ip packets bound for the internet coming from the private subnets send those packets on to their destination and then sends the returning packets back to the source so let's see how it how it works so similar example uh, set up as before but now instead of a public subnet we have a private subnet here right so this can be hosting your database for example um, and the database needs to be constantly regularly uh, patched and updated right to get patches from the internet now um, because it's a private subnet as we just said uh, there is no way for packets to to go to the internet uh, and get the response back right because it's a private subnet you're not using an internet gateway you cannot reach internet so you have this managed service called NAT gateway which gives this whole private subnet uh, access to the internet without assigning any public ip so this is all private ip you really don't need a public ip you don't need uh, an internet gateway so what this means is host can initiate outbound connections and of course those packets will come back but not receive inbound connections so meaning if i'm an actor here i want to ping my database server I cannot do that uh, NAT gateway would block those responses and again it's a managed service so we take care of things like HA uh, things like uh, bandwidth so you really don't have to uh, uh, to uh, to uh, manage those yourself and as we have been seeing in the previous slides uh, the the rules here in the in the route table uh, you it's basically saying all the packets uh, destined uh, uh, for uh, for uh, you know any for any IP address should go through NAT gateway. So basically, you are sending all the traffic from this private subnet to the NAT gateway, and then you, if you are doing getting patches or updates or something, they, those packets are coming back, and that all is managed uh, by the NAT gateway. Now, important thing to keep in mind: you can have more than one NAT ga NAT gateway on a VCN, though a given subnet can route traffic to only a single NAT gateway. So this is a little different than the internet gateway. The third use case is around uh, this concept called service gateway. Now, what exactly do we mean by that? Let's say you, in, like in the previous example, you have a database server which is running here in a private subnet. So this is again a DB that's running in a private subnet. But now, instead of getting the patches, what you want to do is you want to do a backup. And the best place to do a backup for, uh, let's say, a database is object storage. But now the object storage service is a public service, uh, has a public endpoint. Now, from this instance, you cannot reach uh, the object storage because you would need you would need a public IP address. So typically many workaround many customers use is they assign a public IP here and then they can access the the uh, the object storage now that's that's not a secure design right you should never have a public ip uh, assigned to a database uh, server so how do you go about doing the backup still leveraging the benefits of the object storage right so what you do is you create this managed service called service gateway again we take care of ha again we take care of uh, bandwidth so you don't have to worry about those and using the service gateway any traffic from the vcn that is distinct for any of the supported OCI public service uh, 
uh, it uses the instance private IP address. You don't need a public IP. Uh, so it uses the private IP address for routing. The traffic goes over OCI internal network uh, fabric. It never traverses the internet, even though you are accessing uh, the public services, uh, the, the public OCI services. Uh, so it's a very secure design. Uh, and you can still leverage all the benefits of uh, public services. Now, how does this work? Uh, similar to the previous examples, uh, you have a route table here. Now, instead of giving a specific CIDR block here, you provide a service CIDR label. So there are two kinds of label which are available today. For example, if you are going to, to object storage, you could specify uh, object storage is a regional service. So you could specify OCI region object storage uh, here or you could specify all services. So in this case, in future, if you have other services you want to access, uh, you could actually do that um, because you know you have access to all the OCI services through going through your service gateway. The last uh, design pattern is around use cases where you still, you, you have a private subnet here, might be a database, but now instead of going to the internet, you are going to your own customer data centers. Uh, so this can be uh, for, you know, let's say you have your DNS running on-prem, right? And you want to access that through your, uh, your your database running in the cloud, wants to access it. Or you have your on-prem environments from where you want to migrate data, right? So you need to connect to that. So for those use cases, we have again a managed service called a dynamic routing gateway. It's a virtual router that provides a path for private traffic between the VCN and destinations other than the internet. So you're not going to internet, uh, so you're not using internet gateway or NAT gateway, uh, or for that matter, service gateway, uh, going to a public OCI service, but you're going to your on-prem environments. So in this case, uh, you can use the dynamic routing gateway to establish a connection, and there are two different um, uh, two different uh, uh, mechanisms for doing that. One is through using site-to-site -site VPN, uh, and the second is a dedicated private uh, connectivity called Fast Connect. We'll cover these in subsequent modules on connectivity. Uh, but as the the, the uh, graphic is showing here, through the DRG, now your your database can communicate to your on-prem uh, environments. Now. Um, this is we have been we have been seeing this earlier. Uh, you create the DRG, you attach it to the VCN. You have to add a rule here, right? And the rule is very similar to what we had been discussing earlier. All the traffic's so all the packets destined for any any IP address has to go through through DRG for this particular subnet, right? So you're basically sending all the traffic through through the DRG here. Now the DRG is a little bit different than the other gateways we have looked at until now. Uh, DRG is a standalone object. You must attach it to a VCN uh, after you create the DRG. And VCN and DRG have a one-to-one -one relationship, meaning a single VCN can only have one DRG and one DRG can be attached to a single VCN uh, at a time. So just let's quickly summarize all the network connectivity options we, we saw in, in this module. So the first one is around uh, letting instances connect to the internet and receive connections from it, right? Bidirectional, going to internet. So you would use internet gateway. If you want instances to reach the internet, uh, and of course get those packets back for things like updates, uh, but not have inbound connections initiated from the internet, uh, you have NAT gateway. Um, and the net network address, basically is doing the network address translation. Uh, if you want the VCN, uh, uh, your uh, your host in the VCN to privately connect to OCI public services, for example, object storage, but you are bypassing the internet, traffic is all going through Oracle's network uh, backbone, uh, you would use service gateway. And then finally, if you want your host, your, your VCN to connect to your on-prem environment, uh, uh, again for private traffic, you could use um, something like a dynamic routing gateway. So these are the four gateways with different distinct design patterns. In the next module, we'll look at a couple of these uh, demos where we create an internet gateway, we create a NAT gateway, uh, and then subsequently we'll also talk about peering and transit routing, which completes uh, the set of all the 
network connectivity options available with uh, OCI uh, virtual network uh, service. Thanks for um, watching this lecture. If you have time, uh, please join the ne next lecture where we do a couple of demos on these gateways. Thank you.